welcome to the next part of the module on Android Concurrency Frameworks, which begins the coverage of the Async Task Framework. This part examines the structure and functionality of the Async Task Framework and shows how Android uses this framework to access the call logs database concurrently in a background thread to avoid blocking the user interface thread. The looper, handler, thread, message, and runnable classes in the Hammer framework discussed in previous videos are relatively loosely connected, which is flexible and works well for simple use cases, such as posting runnable commands from a background thread to run in the user interface thread. However, these loose connections also require users of the Hammer framework to understand the patterns that guide the structure of and interactions between its classes, especially if they want to implement more sophisticated concurrency models, such as pools of threads that take advantage of multi-core chipsets. Likewise, application developers must write and rewrite message types and message handlers, which is tedious and error-prone. Therefore, to provide a more cohesive, usable, and scalable concurrency model to application developers, Android defines the async task framework, which provides an integrated set of classes that execute long duration operations in one or more background threads and publish their results to the user interface thread without explicitly manipulating threads, handlers, messages, or runnables, though the async task framework uses them internally, along with several other reusable Java concurrency classes, such as FutureTask. The classes in the async task framework are strongly connected, which simplifies its usability by reducing the surface area of its interface. In particular, this framework exposes its capabilities to application developers by the async task facade class, which provides a simplified interface to a complicated body of framework code, as described at this link. There are two main categories of methods in the async task class that provides the facade for the async task framework, as described at this link. The first type are public methods that are invoked by applications. For example, the execute method runs a task with the specified parameters. Conversely, the cancel method attempts to stop the execution of a task. The second type of methods are protected methods, such as on pre-execute, do in background, on progress update, on post execute, and on cancel, which are hook methods invoked by the async task framework at different points of time and in different contexts, such as in the user interface thread or one or more background threads. Framework users must extend the async task base class and override one or more of its hook methods, as shown by this example from the threaded downloads application we'll discuss in upcoming videos. Execute can only be called once on an instance of async task by code running in the user interface thread. Execute is implemented as a template method, described at this link, which collaborates with other parts of the async task framework to run its hook methods at the appropriate time and context. After execute is called, the async task framework invokes the on pre-execute hook method in the user interface thread, which can perform initialization activities, such as displaying a progress dialog to the user. The framework next calls the do in background hook method in a background thread, where long duration operations can run without blocking the user interface thread. As long as do in background is running, it can call publish progress to publish updates on the user interface thread by the on progress update hook method. When do in background completes, it returns a result, which the framework delivers as a parameter to the on post execute hook method, which can display the results of long duration computations in the context of the user interface thread. Now that we've shown the hook methods invoked by the async task framework during normal execution, We'll examine what it does when an async task is canceled. A call to cancel attempts to stop the execution of an async task instance, which will fail if the task is already completed, already been canceled, or could not be canceled for some reason. After an application calls cancel, the framework will invoke the on canceled hook method in the user interface thread after do in background returns. It also ensures that on post execute is never invoked. Async task cancellation is a cooperative process, so the do in background method should periodically check the value returned by the is canceled method and finish as early as possible if it's been canceled, similar to the methods for stopping threads, 
discussed in an earlier video. The async task class defines three generic parameters used by its hook methods to identify the type sent to the task that runs in a background thread, the type of progress units published during background computations, and the type of the result returned when due in background finishes executing in a background thread. An application instantiates these parameters, extends async task, and overrides any or all of its hook methods as needed to customize their behavior to meet its concurrency needs, as shown by this snippet of code derived from the example at this link. Now that we've shown the key methods in the async task facade class, we'll show an example of how Android extends and uses it in the call log async class that's part of the Android phone application, shown at this path name. Several call log async methods use async task to access the call logs database concurrently in a background thread, which is necessary since database operations can take a long time to run, depending on the system's load, so they can't be called in the user interface thread. The call log async class is typically used within an activity, which creates a new call log async object and populates a list of call arguments, such as the caller information, phone number, and call time and duration. These arguments are then passed to the call log async object's add call method, which creates and executes add call task, which is an anonymous instance of an async task subclass that concurrently saves this call information in the call log database. Add call task's do in background hook method invokes the static add call method of the call log calls class. Since do in background runs in a background thread, it can safely block when the call data is inserted into the call log's content provider, as shown at this path name. After the call log data has been inserted into the content provider, the do in background method returns the array of uniform resource identifiers that were added to the underlying SQLite database, shown at this path name. This array is passed as a parameter to the onPostExecute hook method, which runs in the user interface thread and performs a sanity check to ensure the call data was indeed written to the database. Call log async also uses an async task to get the last outgoing call concurrently by creating and executing an anonymous instance of get last outgoing call task. The do in background method of this async task subclass runs in a background thread and invokes a blocking operation to the underlying content provider and SQLite database to get the last outgoing call from the database. Its on post execute method passes a last outgoing call number to the last outgoing call hook method, which was registered as a callback object by the activity earlier. This example shows how Android's async task framework makes it straightforward to execute operations concurrently in background threads and process the results in the user interface thread. In summary, Async Task provides a powerful framework containing an integrated set of classes that applications can use to execute long duration operations in one or more background threads and publish their incremental and final results to the user interface thread without explicitly manipulating threads, handlers, messages, or runnables. Async Task embodies key characteristics of frameworks covered in this earlier video. For example, it supports inversion of control by having the framework invoke its hook methods at certain points and contexts. It also supports domain-specific structure and functionality, such as synchronized message queues and thread pools. Finally, it provides semi-complete portions of applications where the async task base class must be subclassed before it can be used. Subclasses will override at least one method, do in background, which runs in a background thread, performs long duration processing, and returns a result. Subclasses also often override a second method, onPostExecute, which can publish the result to the user interface thread. Async task is used extensively in Android, especially in its applications, as shown at these path names. The onProgressUpdate method is not as widely used in Android as the other async task hook methods, although there are some example usages, as shown at these path names.